The Commander Keen trilogy was a huge success. Before its release, Apogee was generating $7,000 a month. Within a week and a half, Commander Keen alone had made $30,000. Bulletin board systems were flooded with downloads and conversations of Keen. But this was only possible with the unauthorized use of the company's computers. Instead of dealing with lawsuits, they made a contract with Softdisk. The team had to make one game for them every two months. We'll take a look at those games later. For now, here's the rest of the Commander Keen series. At the beginning of February 1991, id Software was officially formed, and with that, the next Commander Keen game was born. This was a two-part series called Goodbye Galaxy, with the first game entitled Secret of the Oracle. I would say this is my favorite out of all the Commander Keen games, for a lot of reasons. It runs under the same engine used in Keen Dreams, but it brings back the old gameplay from the first games and improves on it. Instead of the original two-button controls, firing your weapon is now on its own separate button. Of course, if you really wanted to, you still have that option. Another thing, if you jump to the edge of a cliff, you can pull yourself up. This can save you a lot of hassle, and you'll be doing it quite often. The levels are massive when you compare it to the previous games. You can also enter houses and rooms, and explore the areas within. The keepers of the oracle were kidnapped, so the objective in this game is to rescue them, but the monsters introduced in this game further adds to the challenge. Slugs and jumping mushrooms, rocks that sneak up on you, and various other nasties out for Commander Keen blood. Like in the previous games, it's one hit and you're dead. But as long as you show a little skill and have some patience, you can go through every level without any problems. There is one special monster in this game that has been subjected to numerous parodies and references within the PC gaming industry. The Dopefish. This is the second dumbest creature in the universe, and they'll eat anything that moves. Most notably, they like to eat intergalactic heroes like Commander Keen. The Dopefish made appearances in other games like Quake, Max Payne, Daikatana, and Hitman 2. Tom Hall originally created it as one of 24 possible characters to use in Episode 4. In the game, the dope fish only appears in one level, the Well of Wishes. Smaller fish will start following you once they see you. They don't harm you, but from what I've seen, they basically act as cannon fodder, so to speak, for the dope fish. They swim faster than you, so it seems like that's the only chance you have to get away from it. How it managed to become a widespread joke in the industry, my assumption is simply because of its looks, but we may never really know. Commander Keen 5 was entitled The Armageddon Machine, the second game in the Goodbye Galaxy series. The objective of this game is to deactivate a device called the Omegamatic, better known as the Armageddon Machine. At this point, you probably already know what to expect. The gameplay is exactly the same, except with the new scenery, new monsters, and a new objective to complete. The average player might be thinking the gameplay is just getting repetitive after 5 games. Several games with pretty much the same gameplay can start to get boring. If you haven't gotten bored of the gameplay by then, this game still offers a fun and enjoyable experience, but offers nothing that hasn't already been covered. Episode 6 was the final game in the series, entitled Aliens Ate My Babysitter. The story involves the babysitter being kidnapped, and you have to go in and rescue her. This is a standalone episode with the exact same gameplay as in episodes 4 and 5, but there is one difference. The game was published by Formgen, a company no one has ever heard of. The rights to the game were sold to Apogee later on for whatever reason, and that's all I can tell you. 
Wikipedia only has two paragraphs on it, so it's as if they never existed. When compared to the first three games, episodes 4, 5, and 6 have improvements in every aspect. For one thing, the music exists. It's a mix of cheerful and mellow tunes that blend very well with the cartoonish theme. And yes, the graphics. They lean more towards that of games from the 16-bit consoles by comparison. You can tell when a monster is no longer a threat by the rotating stars above their head. The world around you is clear and crisp, and any graphics that misrepresent danger to the player are kept to a minimum. A number of unofficial Commander Keen games have been made by fans. The most notable of these games are Episode 7, 8, and 9. An unofficial trilogy known as The Universe is Toast. These are actually just mods of Episodes 4, 6, and 5 respectively. Incorporating new music and custom art, the games really feel like they came from id Software itself. Commander Keen's arch-nemesis, Mortimer McMire, has plans to use the Universal Toaster Cannon to destroy the universe, and Commander Keen must stop him before it's too late. The trilogy is free to download, so check it out. In 2001, Activision published a Commander Keen game for the Game Boy Color. That's right, Activision. Although it was created by David A. Palmer Productions, with its permission, the game itself was absolute garbage. The graphics, the sound, the gameplay, it just doesn't feel like a Commander Keen game. The levels were much more linear without offering anything new, or good for that matter. It plays out more like a generic platformer on the NES. Considering it's from Activision, it's an insult for it to carry the name Commander Keen. They might as well have just called it The Space Adventures of Macaulay Culkin, cause that's what it is. With the move towards digital distribution over the past decade, anyone with an internet connection will be able to play these games. Episodes 1 through 5 eventually made its way onto Steam in 2007. It takes advantage of the DOSBox emulator to run the games. If you're into classic gaming, definitely shell out the cash for it. With this current generation of game consoles capable of internet connectivity, it's no surprise that a lot of games from previous consoles are being re-released and sold through the console's online services. The simpler controls make Commander Keen a solid candidate for this. Although the games never had an official release on these consoles, fans of the series are making unofficial ports via the homebrew community. Not only does bringing in these older games help relive old classics, to some people, they're completely new games. And because of its lack of blood and sex appeal, it's perfect for the younger generation of gamers and shows them what gaming was all about in the early 90s. But more than that, the Commander Keen games were exciting to the PC gaming community at the time because of its smooth scrolling game engine, its humorous cartoon style theme, and its all around awesome gameplay. Not only were these good games, but Commander Keen has become an icon of PC gaming culture. If you ever get a chance, check it out.